Hey everybody, Jason Stahl here with this week's Thatcher walkthrough. We're going to start here with the uh, aircraft upside down. We'll talk a little bit what's going on uh, on the bottom sheet here. Um, as you can see, we've got the nose and the uh, front cockpit uh, riveted uh, in, and we are in the process of installing the rear cockpit uh, bottom skin. <clears throat> there are a number of ways this can be installed. Uh, Dave Thatcher says if you want to go one piece from here, all the way to the rear spar, you can do that and then add out riggers uh, uh, for the wing roots. I wanted one piece, uh, including the wing roots back in here, so I did put a seam uh, at the spar section in here. If you didn't care about having uh, waste material and cut out, you could actually cut out like a T-section and make the entire section one piece uh, in there. Um, <clears throat> one way I, I did this, or the way I did this, uh, I brought this back and you can see it does bend alongside and come up the rear spar and attach. Uh, the way I did this is I actually cut this oversized, made the bend, um, attached this to the spar and then I came in and I trimmed the front to uh, length. That uh, avoided the thing of cutting this exactly the size and made sure I got the bend the right angle in the right location. It just made it uh, a little bit easier in here. Um, I have not uh, trimmed or addressed this uh, center section here, I'll be taking a nibbler uh, coming along here, straightening the line, getting rid of, rid of any stress rises along in here. Um, the notch is the width of the longerons for uh, in here. Uh, this, the rear fuselage section will have a double row of rivets uh, attaching to the back and st they'll start forming a curve uh, along the back side here. One important thing to notice as you're installing both the front and rear cockpit sections uh, is to mark and make sure you have a no rivet line uh, on either side of the spar. There is a reinforcing uh, bar uh, 15 inches long uh, either side of the spar that ties the front and rear longerons into the spar. Also uh, the rear uh, or the main landing gear sits on that. It helps distribute the load of the landing gear uh, a little bit more broadly across the longerons uh, and such. So that uh, goes fore and after the spar. Uh, make sure you put no rivets in there to allow uh, space for that to sit down here. Uh, have bolts drilled on this side. The landing gear will be on top of it and the landing gear bolts will go through attaching it on that section. Uh, stay tuned just for a second and we'll get the fuselage turned over and we'll talk more. Okay everybody we're back. We flipped the uh, fuselage right side up and as you can see we do have controls hooked up. We've got elevator control action here going to the push rod to join the rear. You can see that moves that. On the other side is our aileron. The side-to-side -side movement comes across to here through a torque tube in my spare hind, uh, rod end bearing because I need two of them there. It's hanging up all the time. But you see that goes in here and joins to the stick on the stick on the side-to-side -side movement. Um, things to watch out for um, on here. When I first set this up, elevator movement causes the torque tube to slide. Um, Dave Thatcher confirms that is not supposed to be the case. He doesn't specify in the drawing to have anti-shift sleeves, which are these units here. These are anti-shift sleeves to keep the bar from sliding back and forth. There were none in the drawings for this, but he does say that it may be a good idea to put this on there because this, this is not supposed to slide fore and aft. What's causing it to move fore and aft is that the rod end bearings can't swivel freely enough um, in the forks. He says if you get a little bit of brass uh, bushing material, um, the same bushing material you use for in, in here, uh, and just cut little uh, um, like sixteenth of an inch pieces in here just to open that up and allows the rod end bearing to swivel a little bit more freely. That'll keep it from dragging that torque tube back and forth. Uh, and then you could actually lock this down with anti-shift sleeves uh, if necessary. Another thing uh, to look out for, um, because this torque tube is supposed to be mounted three inches below the top of the spar. Um, that's to allow for the ear of the uh, LMN4, uh, 10 bearing uh, here. That puts the fork down below where it was. This hole was actually came to here um, per, per the plans and was not enough room for the, the fork to actually go through. You can see him actually still getting a little uh, mm -hmm. hang up there. Um, so I had to cut that down. Also the one inside had to be cut down a little bit. Um, I cut it down as big but it didn't need to be as, as low just to clear the uh, control rod. 
on the other side. Um, the control rod will just go out the straight and directly to the aileron bell crank. It does not need to drop down to a, uh, uh, an arm such as this. Um, the second rod joint will uh, come out and then go to the bell crank, which sits uh, right at this position here. Um, in there. So this needs to be lower, this needs to be lower um, a little bit also. If we look at one of the wing spars uh, or wing ribs, um, this hole right here is, is for the fuel line to come in. But uh, when it's actually put in uh, the airplane uh, in here, you can see the longerons in the way. This hole for the fuel on this rib and the one on the other side needs to be brought up about one and an eighth of an inch uh, higher. That will clear the Longeron and allow the fuel line uh, to actually come in with inside the fuselage. Also, um, let me get this out. <clears throat> you notice there are no holes uh, for the fuel line in these ribs. You'll need to um, add a hole uh, into each of these seat ribs uh, to let, allow the fuel lines to come in to the center. Dave had no drawings for fuel um, on here and we've talked a little bit on the phone um, the fuel lines from each wing tape are de designed to come in here there is an additional bulkhead that needs to be put in here to support the fuel lines at this point the fuel lines should be aluminum they are rubber coming into this point they change over to aluminum they will then go forward through two separate holes in the spar into the center section here forward through the A1 and the A2 bulkheads all the way into the cavity of the leg rest, and the fuel selector is supposed to sit right about in, in this area here. That's uh, what he had intended um, in there. <clears throat> so you're gonna have to be putting some more holes in here uh, to route the fuel lines. At this point, the fuel line, single fuel line, now that it's past the fuel selector, goes out to one of the side, either left or right, depending on whatever way you wanna set up. Uh, for fuel will come out to the side and then travel up the longeron and here you can put your filters your gas escalators fuel pumps um, whatever uh, you may need uh, in there so that's something to look forward to those he says he'll be getting those plans out shortly he's also revised on how you put together the um, nose gear so the uh, nose gear he's beefed up he says he's eliminated the need for this um, in here, kind of beefed up some other sections um, in here. And uh, so anyway, that's uh, so much for the Thatcher walkthrough this week. Hope everybody has a great week. Bye-bye.